Welcome to our presentation on learning with algorithmic supervision via continuous relaxations. I am Felix Petersen and this is joint work with my collaborators Christian Borgelt, Hilde Kühne and Oliver Deussen. So, let's start by dissecting the title. Algorithmic supervision means that, instead of directly supervising a neural network's output, the output of an algorithm that was applied to a neural network's output is supervised. Let's discuss two scenarios where we would want to use algorithmic supervision. First, let's consider a setting of weaker supervision where only the output of an algorithm applied to the predictions is available and where we want to infer the embedding between the neural network and the algorithm. An example for that is sorting supervision where only the relative order of a set of elements is known while the absolute values remain unknown. For example, here we have a sorted set of multi-digit MNIST images. ACNN should now predict a value that preserves the order of the images. This should be done based only on the information that the set is sorted. We apply the CNN to each image and then use the differentiable sorting algorithm to supervise the training by enforcing the predictions to be sorted. This allows us to train the CNN. The second scenario of algorithmic supervision is where we would conventionally want to obtain a neural network's prediction but where the neural network also has to solve a task, which could also be solved by an algorithm. An example for this is shortest path supervision, where the input is a Warcraft terrain map and the task is to predict the shortest path across the map according to some hidden costs. Here we can integrate a classic algorithm to make the architecture more reliable. With that, the neural network only has to predict the hidden cost embedding, while the actual computation of the shortest path is deferred to the algorithm. Both of these settings follow the same overall architecture. While direct supervision propagates data to a neural network and the output of the neural network is supervised, for algorithmic supervision data is propagated through a neural network to produce an embedding and an algorithm is applied to this embedding and the output of the algorithm is then supervised. Algorithmic supervision can be seen as an encoder-decoder architecture where the encoder is a neural network and the decoder is an algorithm. In settings such as sorting supervision, we are mostly interested in the embeddings, that is the displayed values, while in settings such as shortest path supervision, we are interested in the shortest path, that is the output of the algorithm. In addition, having the embeddings also makes the architecture more interpretable. One important issue that arises in the algorithmic supervision setting is that most algorithms are conventionally not differentiable. Therefore, we propose continuous relaxations which make algorithms differentiable. For example, for the shortest path algorithm, here you can see how the algorithm is relaxed with different degrees of relaxations. Using a relaxed algorithm allows gradient-based training of the neural networks. Many approaches in this direction focus on relaxing an individual algorithm. However, there are also more general approaches such as the perturbed optimizers. In this work, we propose a method for continuously relaxing arbitrary algorithms based on a general relaxation of discrete conditions. Specifically, we relax conditions in control structures such as conditional if-else statements, bounded and unbounded loops, that is, for and while loops, as well as indexing such that the resulting algorithms are smoothly differentiable. By perturbing a variable in a conditional statement with a logistic distribution, we can approximate the expectation value under this perturbation in closed form, making our method stable and fast. We benchmark our method on four kinds of algorithmic supervision, sorting supervision, shortest path supervision, silhouette supervision and editing distance supervision. We observe that our general framework can generalize instances of existing relaxations of specific algorithms, such as silhouette rendering, where soft grass and pix to vex can be seen as special cases of our general framework. We will now start by visually deriving the relaxation of a simple conditional statement. Let's consider the following conditional statement. If x is greater than 2, y is set to a and otherwise y is set to b. Let us perturb x by a logistic distribution around x, x tilde. Our condition is that x should be greater than the value of 2, so we mark the cases where the condition is not satisfied with red on the left and where the condition is satisfied with green on the right. Let us now consider the probability of the statement being true for different x. For our current x at 0.5 we have a probability of around 20% that the statement is true 
which we obtain by integrating over the green area. Varying x, we can evaluate this for different x, integrate the green area for each of them and we obtain the plot on the left. This turns out to be a logistic sigmoid function, which is the CDF of the logistic distribution, which simplifies the computation. With that, we can compute the probability that y is set to a and the probability that y is set to b in closed form. y is set to a convex combination of a and b, where the weight for a is sigmoid of x minus 2 and the weight for b is 1 minus the weight for a. After deriving the if else statement, we will continue by exploring unbounded while loops. Here, we initialize x to 0 and while x is smaller than 5, we increment x by 1 and in the end we print x. We start with the probability that at least 0 iterations are reached, which is 1, because fewer than 0 iterations is not possible. Then we perturb x by a logistic distribution and consider the probability that x is smaller than 5 and multiply this with the probability that at least 0 iterations have been reached and by that obtain the probability that at least one iteration has been reached. We continue this until the probability of the current iteration to be reached is smaller than some epsilon. As soon as we are at x equals 5, we can see that the probability significantly decays. Based on this, we can compute the probability for exact numbers of iterations via pairwise differences in the previous plot. Here, 5 has the largest probability. Via a weighted sum of the outcomes of the loop traversals, weighted by the respective probabilities, we can compute the expectation value of x after the loop and come to the result that x is 4.98. This can also be done with more complex loop bodies, but in every case, we only need to keep track of the states after each loop traversal and combine them via a convex combination. Similar to the if else statements, here we can also compute everything in closed form. In analogy to the smaller than or greater than operators, in the paper we also propose a relaxed equality operator. For relaxing max and argmax, we use the well known softmax. In addition, we introduce real valued indexing with logistic perturbations, as well as relaxed categorical indexing and more in the paper. Let us continue to our experiments and start with the sorting supervision experiment. Here we are given a set of 4-digit MNIST numbers which are given in their sorted order while the individual absolute values remain unsupervised. The goal is to train a CNN producing a scalar value for each of the images which corresponds to the displayed value and that the CNN is an order preserving mapping. For this we use one instance of a CNN and apply it to each of the images which yields an array of scalars which we then input into a relaxed bubble sort algorithm. We modified the bubble sort algorithm such that it also reports whether the input sequence was already sorted. Due to the relaxation this corresponds to the probability that the input was sorted. Our training objective is therefore maximizing the probability that the input to the algorithm is sorted as we know that it is already sorted. As for the results, we achieve competitive performance in comparison to existing differentiable sorting algorithms as can be seen in the table. The metric here is the fraction of sets of n elements where the CNN produced the correct ranking, that is, the cases where the order among n elements was preserved. Our second experiment is the shortest path supervision. Here we are given an image of a Warcraft terrain map and the goal is to produce the shortest path which can be done via a CNN. To improve the architecture and make it interpretable, we use the CNN only to predict cost embeddings and use a differentiable relaxation of the Bellman Ford shortest path algorithm to generate the shortest path for the cost embeddings. Training causes the CNN to learn the cost matrix and by that achieve improved performance on predicting the shortest paths. For the results, we evaluate the ratio between the costs of the predicted shortest path and the cost of the ground truth shortest path, measured using the underlying hidden cost matrices of the test data. We find that the baseline without an integrated algorithm is significantly outperformed by all methods that do integrate an algorithm. We also find that continuous relaxations with logistic distributions achieve the best predictions on this task. Let us continue to our third experiment where we cover silhouette supervision. In the silhouette supervision experiment, the goal is to learn without 3D supervision to predict a 3D mesh from a single image. 
For this, various differentiable renderers have been proposed in computer vision. Usually, the architecture is that an input image is fed into a neural network which predicts a 3D mesh and then a differentiable renderer renders the silhouette of the mesh. This silhouette can then be compared to the supervised ground truth silhouette which allows training the CNN. By varying the degree of relaxation, that is, by varying the temperature parameter, we can see how the scale of the logistic distributions affects the rendered silhouette. On this task, our general framework achieves competitive performance compared to specialized differentiable renderers. Now we come to our fourth and final experiment, which is the Levenstein Editing Distance Supervision. Here the setting is that we are given two strings of EMNIST characters and as supervision we only obtain the editing distance between the two strings. We process all characters with the CNN and then propagate it through the algorithm. Here we use the Levenstein dynamic programming algorithm and relax it using our framework. This is a setting of extremely low supervision where we only have a single scalar feedback for pairs of strings of characters. Nevertheless, we achieve reasonable character classification performance on this task by integrating a differentiable algorithm. Thank you very much for your attention. Summarizing, we explored algorithmic supervision and how it can produce performance improvements and even allow settings of weaker supervision. We proposed a novel general continuous relaxation of algorithms to make them differentiable. Check out our code including our new library AlgoVision, short for algorithmic supervision, to make your own algorithms differentiable. Our code including AlgoVision, which automatically relaxes algorithms, will be openly available on GitHub. If you're interested in more information on our relaxations, mathematical details, all experiments and all algorithms, please check out our paper. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, like and subscribe for more ML research videos. If you want to watch another ML research video, here you can find out how you can make your AI model fair without retraining it.